view. It's so great. Last time I talked here, I was that way. This is much prettier. So thank you, and welcome to Vancouver Public Library to mark October as Islamic Heritage Month. My name is Kyla Epstein, and I have the pleasure of serving as the chair of the Vancouver Public Library Board. Just a plug here, applications are open for the Library Board on the City of Vancouver website due November 12th, if you're interested in serving on the board. And I'd like to also acknowledge that we are here today on the unceded traditional ancestral homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. It's very important for Vancouver Public Library to acknowledge that. This, of course, is where we have our collections and our event spaces and public spaces. And for myself, I am raising a child here and having really important and interesting conversations with him about what it means for us to be on this land and to live here. So thank you. So I am delighted to be here, and I assume this is why you're here as well, to celebrate the wide array of Islamic culture, history, art, and achievement within this community. And as you may also know, Vancouver Public Library is so honored to be part of a community that shares ideas and information with events like this one to foster community connections and have conversations that matter. A few less interesting things. Um, as you go through the events today, think about your phones or things that might make noise and maybe turn them off or to silent. I know there's a variety of events happening in different spaces, but just be conscious of that. Um, if you need restrooms, there's one here, one of these is closed, but there's two more up there. And of course, if anything happens today, we don't anticipate an emergency, but we've got all this amazing staff around who will direct you to exits if that is needed. So just a few things you might need to know today. Okay, I am so pleased to pass things over today. Um, we were honored last year, although it feels like yesterday, to have Tosnat Cease Weiss as our 2018 Indigenous Storyteller in Residence. And I miss seeing Cease greatly. It was just nice to have her around all the time. So I'm pleased to see her today and pleased to have her here today to welcome you. Cease. Anhaskwalawan, Anhaskwal, Tights to Nak, Queen's Nas, Heitschka, Chikwin Mintomi Wit, really lifts my heart. That's what I'm, I'm, sure, I'm going to share with you what I just said in my language. It lifts my heart on this beautiful day to uh, welcome you all into this space and to share, uh, share this work of, I call this welcoming you ashore. So if you've never been welcomed ashore, then I hope today that you feel welcomed ashore and uh, that we, that our people give you good greetings and love and kindness and yeah, I'm going to share a song that our our people sang to our leaders when they left the land here to uh, to take the train across the country then to take a ship to England where they declared that we are never giving up our rights to the lands and waters here and we've never done that so when you hear the term unceded, that means that we have no ceded treaties on these lands and waters. And so this song we call the Siam Slolam. This is our leader's song. And uh, you, can, you can sit or stand, whatever feels right for you. It's, uh, I always tell people, just go with your mind and heart. And yeah, it's also one of my favorite songs because all the little ones in our community catch on to the song fast and they just, they just start tapping their feet and doing little dances and it's like ultra cute. <laughs> anyway, so the Siam Slolom Hoichuk Weichak Yof on Hasqualowans. Thank you. 
fish this big. When you do it this way, you are doing the proper kayachtin, and it is about us uh, warming you in from our hearts. And uh, so we also learned this from the cedar trees, the tree of life. So the next time you're near a cedar, take a look at the boughs and how they all come down. It's like they're just waiting to welcome you and to open up their hearts as well. And the cedar tree is the tree of life because it gives us clothing, transportation, housing, and medicine to, to clear negative energy from our, our minds and our bodies and our homes. And so really want to welcome you into the ancestral lands and waters of the Huamathquiam, the Tisleiwatuth, and the Skoomish Olkamea, and it warms our hearts and minds to know that other cultures are celebrating their worlds and their lives in good ways and uh, to use spaces like the public library where it is a big open house for everybody is very important and a good metaphor, metaphor for community building. So really uh, thank you very much to Aslam for inviting me, for. Christina for helping to make a program like this happen and I wish you the best today. We always say that these songs are like a, a sum quo. We, it's like wrapping you up in a blanket. So in our way we've wrapped you all in a blanket today to warm your hearts and since it's the fall and the rains are coming, we all need cozy blankets. So Haichka, Osiem. to read the proclamation for the Islamic History Month in the city of Vancouver. Thank you so much. And if I too could uh, uh, start by acknowledging with deep gratitude that we are on the unceded ancestral territories of the Musqueam people, the Musqueam, sorry, of the Coast Salish people, the Musqueam, the Squamish, and the Tsleil-Waututh people. And it is with deep gratitude um, that I do say that because their lands are unseated. And uh, the fact that they have welcomed the newcomers continuously through their existence here, and uh, I think is, um, is very heartening. Uh, and it is, in fact, at the core of what I love about Vancouver, uh, which is that we are a city which is welcoming of newcomers. We are, I think, a city that, that's a world within a city in terms of the diversity of peoples who are here. I particularly love the diversity of restaurants, uh, <laughs> that we can eat and eat together foods from everywhere in the world. I also just want to thank um, Will and Fatima for the actual work you've done here in terms of this event, but also on the Cultural Communities Advisory Committee. Uh, there is an advisory committee of City Council and City Hall that brings people together and informs us uh, as councillors about issues, um, takes a role within the city to move um, ideas forward, meet challenges. Um, including some very scary challenges that sometimes happen in terms of um, some of the more global movements which have really been um, extremely destructive to relationships between people uh, and, and um, breeding prejudice, for example. So I think your work is incredibly valuable. And this particular month is a really good month for all of us to learn um, and to share and to uh, enjoy uh, the, the cultural traditions of the Islamic community. So I'm going to read the proclamation. Um, it is Islamic History Month. 
Whereas the city of Vancouver's identity is defined by its people who come from all parts of the world, bringing with them their rich customs and traditions that contribute to the multicultural fabric of our society and enhance our city's social, economic, and civic spheres. And whereas Islamic cultural heritage has been part of Canadian history dating back to the mid-19th century and has made a significant contribution to the well-being of humanity in numerous fields of endeavors. And whereas the contributions of Islamic civilization to the arts, sciences, medicine, architecture, uh, humanities, music, and other areas of human knowledge have enriched the world. And whereas Islamic History Month offers a unique opportunity to recognize these contributions to the diversity of the city of Vancouver's vibrant and dynamic cultural mosaic. There's lots of whereases. And whereas Islamic History Month is important to fostering greater understanding, acceptance, and social cohesion amongst people of all faiths, and whereas the city of Vancouver encourages the promotion of intercultural understanding, mutual respect, and universal acceptance of our city's cultural diversity. Now, therefore, I, Adrian Carr, on behalf of Gregor Robertson, Mayor of the City of Vancouver, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2018 as Islamic History Month in the City of Vancouver. Thank you, Councillor Carr. I'd like to now welcome Will and Fatima from the Cultural Community Advisory Committee. and it's a privilege to be here today. Um, we've uh, prepared speeches both. Uh, we're not quite there yet with the public speaking without notes, and we thought for an important event like today, there were some things that needed to be written down and said, and uh, you will note that there will be some things that might not have been in the proclamation that uh, will be in our, our, our talks today. So just bear with us as we grab our notes. First of all, I want to thank Councillor Carr. Um, for those that don't know, Councillor Carr was our council liaison for the past year and a half, and we were really grateful for the work that you've done for us. Um, I'd also like to thank Ms. C. Spies for her traditional welcome and all the work that she's done educating Vancouverites in her art and storytelling. It's a humble reminder that we as settlers have so much to learn, listen, and gain from the unceded traditional First Nations and Indigenous territories that we have all settled on. So my name is Will Tao, and pronouns he, him, his, and this is my colleague and one of the lead organizers of this event, Ms. Fatima Yassin. And we are privileged and humbled to be outgoing members of the City of Vancouver's Cultural Committee's Advisory Committee. We're a committee that served for the past year and a half, just immediately prior to the last election, and we've been given a mandate to advise Council on enhancing access and inclusion for Vancouver's diverse cultural communities to fully participate in city services and civic life. Today marks the second of our Voices of Vancouver initiatives and our final event of the term, and fiddling so. The very inspiration for why we decided to turn our strategy from inward meetings at City Hall to outreach to diverse communities was because of the threat of Islamic phobic protests and the counter protests that took place instead on August 2017. We recognized that while we were proud of those who stood up to combat racism and Islamophobia, we couldn't help but recognize that some voices were missing from those protests. Speaking to individuals after, uh, they were afraid as newcomers, as Muslim Canadians, as hijab-wearing Muslim Canadian women, to go to a public space to stand up and speak. So, one of our first initiatives with the Voice of Vancouver was, took place on March 23rd of this year with the International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, where we had speaker and our good friend Noor Fadel speak to youth, many of whom were Muslim Canadians, about her experiences as a victim of hate crime. We provided bystander training that really brought to light how unconscious and conscious biases affect our interactions and make us all vulnerable and susceptible, uh, and some of us even more so, to discrimination. Around the same time, Councillor Adrian Carr invited us to, to start this planning for this event, saying that the, we needed a first public celebration for Islamic Heritage Month and History Month in the city. So here we are today, with a lot of hard work and some sleepless nights, mostly from Aslan, uh, the lead organizer, uh, who will speak shortly. We've made this happen. So now to some more salient 
context for today's event. I want to talk about the word history just briefly. I believe we cannot celebrate Islamic History Month without recognizing the roots of all Muslim Canadians as part of the history of Canada. As you will soon learn from Imad Ali in his interactive display, we know as a historical fact that, that Muslim Canadians were in Canada prior to Confederation in 1867. By 1911, BC had the most Muslims in the whole country of Canada. And by 1912, when the Kamagatsu Maru arrived, there was a local Muslim on the shore committee who managed to get permanent residence in Canada. We also know in 1965, Vancouver's first mosque, the Jamaya Mosque, was established on West 8th and operates to date, still serving as a homeless shelter when the temperature drops. As you can see from just these small snippets, there's a continuing evolving historical narrative that we must tell and share to remind that there was a Muslim foundation, Muslim Canadian foundation for Canada. Islam is not a newcomer religion or a Middle Eastern religion. It is a Canadian religion. Indeed, by 2036, and these stats will maybe will surprise you, but Statistics Canada estimates that between 5.6% and 7.2% of the total population of Canada will be Muslim. With these increased numbers, we, are, we hope that there will be an increased focus and study and a deeper look on how we can integrate Muslim ideas and culture into our Canadian social fabric. Work that I know the Centre for Comparative Muslim Studies at SFU has been doing and continues to do as lead organizers for this event. So I'm going to boldly state this, that Muslim ideals and ideas have a place in Canada's future. I challenge anybody who argues that the recognition of the way we spend our substance, however much we cherish, upon family, orphans, the needy, newcomers, homeless, and freeing those from the bonds of misfortune, be it drug addiction, trafficking, that these are not fundamentally Canadian values. In fact, our charter values aim to protect the rights of those very groups facing historical subjugation that this Quran passage has just highlighted. We can keep enunciating differences between us or we can find those unique synergies and strengthen them. And today I pitch that we do the latter. And this leads to, me, leads to my last point before I pass on to Fatima to share her experiences, is that we need to also accept our shortcomings and move forward. As a city writ large, we haven't heard your voices. We haven't heard Muslim voices. We haven't given you space to celebrate, engage, and share your perspectives, to lead, to be empowered. And case in point, there's never been a single Muslim Canadian who has served as a city councilor in Vancouver. The last South Asian city councilor was elected in 1972. Intersectionally, we've never had a South Asian, let alone Muslim woman, city councilor. This also isn't just a Vancouver phenomenon. Recently in Toronto, not a single Muslim Canadian was elected to council in 24 wards. Only one hijab-wearing female politician has ever been elected to public office in Canada. And her name is Ms. Asma Malik as a school board trustee. And when her ward was eliminated by the Ford government, she chose not to run in the past civic election. Therefore, how do we see us if we are not there? We cannot speak of reconciliation broadly as a city without facing every single one of our cultural communities, examining how they become our neighbors and citizens, and increasing not only our cultural humility, and integrating them into our lives, but giving them an opportunity to integrate us into their stories and their narratives. Attending events such as today is a good start, but only a start. Similarly, while we step forward to change, we also need to look back behind traditional power structures and see how might, that might involve us stepping back and allowing others to have a share of the podium and the power, and that their success is our success. As, Am, as Alama Iqbal, the great Pakistani poet once wrote, words without power is mere philosophy. So today, as you listen to the music, laugh at the comedy, trace your brush through the calligraphy, don't forget your role in helping to facilitate this conversation, to elevate voice, to help empower this diverse Muslim community that the city is proud to help, along with all of our diverse ethnocultural and indigenous communities. Thank you. While Will has spoken about the larger context, let me tell you about the individual one, specifically my own. My name is Fatima Yassin. I've been volunteering with the Cultural Communities Advisory Committee for uh, about a year and a half now. Will, myself, and everyone else on the committee have all joined for different reasons. And I just wanted to share a bit of a backstory on why I got involved. I was born and raised here in Vancouver. 
My parents are Muslim and they immigrated here from Fiji in 1983. More than a few years after that, I was born. I had a wholesome, loving childhood. My parents worked hard to give us everything we wanted. Although uh, it was at times, my dad's calling right now, <laughs> coincidentally. Although it was uh, at times a little confusing as I felt it didn't exactly fit, as, as I felt I didn't exactly fit into what I thought needed to be a clear definition of what it meant to be Muslim. I embodied and still embody Canada's multiculturalism with a, mix, with a mixture of multiple overlapping identities. And the result is, I think, a diverse perspective. Although growing up, the representation I saw of the Muslim community was either absent or, as, I've, as we've seen in the media, extreme. The media in particular blanketed and unfairly prejudiced an entire group of people, and the consequences, as we've seen in numerous instances, have been tragic. Watching all of this unfold ignited a fire with me, within me. I wanted to do something about it, so I finally decided to get involved and see if, I could, see if I could help create a change. And so I joined the CCAC and worked on different projects to do just that, including this one. With this event, I wanted to make sure the diversity of the Muslim community was represented, to not only display our diverse spectrum of culture and identity, but to also create a, a sense of belonging for people like me who aren't sure where they fit. I also wanted, along with the team, to celebrate the community's music and art. I remember during one of our first meetings, we were brainstorming the theme for the event, and all of us immediately gravitated towards the arts. It was just so obvious to those of us who have, who have attended our fair share of community panel discussions and lectures, which, by the way, are also very interesting, though it's nice to incorporate other elements as well. Before ending off, uh, I'd love to thank everyone, but uh, I'll hand it off to Amal to do that. I hope you all, in fact, I'm confident you all will enjoy this event, and I look forward to celebrating with all of you. Thank you very much. I'd like to now welcome Amal Ghazal from the SFU Center of Comparative Muslim Studies. Everybody, um, if you haven't heard of the Center for Comparative Muslim Studies, our mandate is actually to turn or to head turn philosophy into action, to provide a platform for the Muslim community and all communities in Vancouver uh, to showcase their talents, to develop their skills. So we've been doing a lot of activities towards that goal, and we'll, um, and this is one of them. And it's such a great honor actually to be a partner with the library uh, to celebrate Islamic History Month. So on behalf of my colleagues and my staff at the center and at Simon Fraser University, I welcome all of you here uh, to celebrate Islamic History Month and to enjoy all the different activities you're going to, uh, to see until 5 p.m. Uh, this is a great opportunity and a perfect location as well to bring the communities together and to showcase some of the talents we have in the Muslim community here in Vancouver. And events like these help uh, building bridge, bridges and alliances uh, between the different communities, not just among uh, or within the Muslim community. And also, these events and a celebration like this help us in the fight against Islamophobia and also against all kinds of phobias uh, that undermine our humanity and our freedoms. What you see today is a project from the community and by the community. Many members of the community had to sacrifice a lot to make it happen. I thank them all. And I'm going to thank uh, specific individuals in particular. If I leave anyone out in my thanks, uh, we sincerely apologize. It's not going to be intentional at all. Uh, first, I thank Kyla Epstein. Where is she? She's okay. Uh, the uh, Vancouver Public Library Board Chair, and I also thank all the VPL staff, especially Christina and Samantha. Thanks at Tenet, Seas Weiss, for opening our event with words of indigenous wisdom, rooting us in the land and reminding us of the unceded land we're on. Councillor Adrian Carr, for supporting this event and reading the proclamation. Well, Fatima, thank you very much, and thank you for your very passionate words today. 
and the rest of the city's cultural committees advisory uh, or cultural communities advisory committee for initiating and supporting the work of underrepresented communities in the city and thanks for Raj Palkoli for supporting the team as well. The volunteer event planning team who have been who have given countless hours to make this event happen. I thank them sincerely because I don't think this could have happened without all this volunteer uh, uh, work that was put in. All the performers and exhibitors you're going to encounter and meet today. I also thank Mina's Bakery and Taiwei for the snacks provided. A big thank you for Aslam Burgulia, whose energy and sincerity have helped connect us all together and have fused so much positive vibe within Vancouver's diverse communities. Aslam is a member of the center's team that include others whom I also thank for their efforts, especially Janine Mary Conrad. The beautiful, the beautiful designs you see on this event's poster and other posters for our center are the work of the talented Dua Jamal. Thank you all who shared the event with friends and families and everyone who's here today to celebrate Islamic History Month with the Muslims of Vancouver. Thank you all. Just one brief note, we ask for your patience and forgiveness in case the schedule goes over or if the rooms are too small. It's the first time we're doing this event here in this new space, so if there are some glitches, please excuse us. Welcome again and please enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to now invite everybody for tea and cookies in room 916, up the stairs to your right, and there we will celebrate some more. Thank you all for coming.